another overcast day here in uh, Bagan. And I don't mind that at all because with the cloud cover, it keeps the uh, sun at bay. I can't imagine how hot it would be here if, we, if the sun were out in uh, clear skies. With all these clouds, it's nice and comfortable. I've got my uh, new uh, e-bike behind me here. Got a blue one today. The regular shop that I go to ran out of bikes. This is a Sunday, so I guess it's also a weekend, a lot busier, and I kind of had a feeling that might happen. So I even went there fairly early at about 8.30 or 9 to make sure I got a bike and they were already all gone. So I walked up the street to this uh, little shop on the corner and they, they don't have as big an operation and uh, they had two bikes still sitting there. So I picked up this one and it's obviously not in as good a condition as theirs. You know, little bits and pieces are kind of loose and when I'm riding it, I can feel that it's pulling to the right. So I think it's been in an accident or two and the frame is bent a little bit, but still seems to run. So I'm gonna take it out on the road and do some more exploring here in the Bagan archeological zone. I'm not quite sure where I'll end up. There are three or four of the major temples out there that I've got my eye on that I haven't seen yet. And I'll probably head in that direction. So let's go. Oops. I mounted the GoPro a different way this time. There was no uh, bars on the front where I could mount it, so I have it wrapped around the mirror and draped over the uh, front dash. And it's bouncing around a lot, but it seems to be fairly secure. I've noticed that this bike's uh, turn signal doesn't make a sound when you turn it on. There's no beeping. So if you uh, use the uh, turn signal, you just have to remember to turn it off afterwards or else you'll have the uh, signal going the entire time. This is my uh, second to last day here in Bagan. And then on Tuesday, I'm taking the boat from Bagan to Mandalay. I've ridden up and down this main road several times since I got here and I keep seeing these temples off to the side, but I've never stopped to check them out. So I thought since I'm here and I don't have any definite plans, why not pull over and uh, take a look at them? And since I have the camera mounted on the handlebars, I can actually aim the camera better. So if I see a temple like that, I can point my camera at it point my GoPro in that direction. Makes it more uh, convenient as I turn. As you see, the uh, camera turns now. The other day I had it mounted on the frame, so it only, it didn't change direction when I uh, moved the uh, handlebars. Wow, I like this temple here. This is, uh, this is uh, Doug's kind of temple. Hello. I don't know any of the history of this temple. I don't even know uh, the name of it. Hello. Sure, I'll take a look inside. Yeah. As I said, I don't know the name of this temple, but it is currently my uh, favorite one out of all the ones I've seen. 
I think normally the uh, front door is closed and locked, but there was a man here. He says he's uh, the caretaker, and uh, he opened the door and then brought me inside. I couldn't uh, capture any of the interior on my uh, GoPro because, as it often does, it froze up on me. So as a technical note, you know, as much as I love using this GoPro and uh, I love the image quality of the video I get from it, it's great to use, but I don't know how professionals can rely on GoPros to do their work because these mine have been so unreliable. This one will freeze up, I don't know, every 10 times I use it, it'll freeze up at least once, sometimes twice, and then the file it tries to save gets corrupted. And it's always really annoying because it always seems to freeze up at the one time you really want to use it. Anyway, the interior of this uh, temple was really beautiful. It was one of the ones with a lot of um, painting, original painting and carving still in existence uh, on the inside. And the uh, caretaker took me in there with a flashlight and uh, showed me a lot of the uh, artwork on the ceiling and on the walls. Yeah, this mystery nameless uh, pagoda is my favorite one. That's beautiful too on the outside. I love this, like I said the other day, the rugged quality you get with the exposed brick. And with this one, there's so much on the interior that's still completed. You really get a sense of how it looked when it was uh, freshly made, probably with uh, you know the entire surface covered in uh, bright paintings and stone carvings, that sort of thing. Because all of the exposed brick that you see here was not meant to be exposed. Originally, the entire exterior and interior would be uh, covered with decorations whether painted or carved into the sandstone. The man who showed me the inside was sort of interesting to uh, chat with him, partially because I couldn't understand a word he was saying. There was like a few English nouns. Like he shone his uh, flashlight on a painting. You could see the outline of an elephant and he would say something and then in the middle of it he'd say elephant and king and words like that I could pick out. But beyond that, I, I couldn't understand a word he was saying, even though he was uh, speaking in English. And I did ask him a couple of questions, very simple ones, but he had no ability to understand what I was saying or uh, to, to reply. <laughs> so I'm not really sure if he is an official, if he's officially connected to the temple or just happens to sort of hang out here. And after he uh, showed me around the interior, he said that he was a painter. And as we went out, he unrolled a bunch of very nice uh, paintings on cloth that he had for sale. And um, if I were, if I had a home and I were going back home after this trip, I definitely would have uh, bought a few of them. You know, just they're really beautiful. I didn't ask him how much they were, but they probably weren't expensive, but they were very nice. And he, uh, he obviously had a lot of experience dealing with people who were reluctant to buy because before I even came out with my, you know, uh, reasons why I don't want to buy a painting, he was anticipating them. So for example, the fact that I'm just traveling around and I don't have a home, so I don't really want to just carry paintings with me everywhere I go in my backpack. He'd heard that excuse before. <laughs> so he was demonstrating how it folds up into a very small package he demonstrated that it can be washed and cleaned or something like that. So it was very, uh, very mobile. And every time I came up with a, a reason why I didn't want to buy a painting, he had a, a very strong argument why my reason made no sense at all and I really should buy one of his uh, paintings. And I almost did. He was a very good salesman. But in the end, I, I did not buy a painting. So, oh, very... Uh, good idea to turn in here. I guess that's a good life lesson. I often have these, uh, you know, as you travel around, you'll see something interesting and you have this urge like, oh, I should go check that out. But then it feels like it's too much of a hassle and say, like, ah, I'll do it next time or something. But you really should follow up on those uh, urges because uh, yeah, you find places like this beautiful temple. 
All right, now trying something different with the GoPro. Since I have it mounted high on the bike itself, I tried, I just thought I'd try to uh, turn it around and have it facing backwards and I can see myself for a few minutes as I drive along. I'm just heading back to the main road now and I'm going to head in the direction of uh, New Bagan and Old Bagan. Oh, by the way, I've seen a few things online. I don't know whether it's actually true or not, but apparently it's a possibility that Bagan has just been approved by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. I was talking about that just the other day, but how it surprised me that it wasn't a World Heritage Site, and I was speculating as to why that might be. So I did a little bit of reading about it, and I was right to an extent that Part of the reason it was never approved were the restoration that was done after various earthquakes and they didn't feel like the restoration work kept the original art and the original structure as well as it should have. But also I guess over the last few decades permits were given to various developers to build hotels and other structures like right inside the archaeological zone and UNESCO felt that was not appropriate and uh, so now they had to talk about that and talk about what is appropriate in the future in terms of development and I guess there's the question of the existing hotels now do they have to be moved and I guess there was talk of a deadline of they would give them approval as a UNESCO World Heritage Site if they agreed to move those hotels by the year 2028 or something like that. Anyway, like I said, I, I'm no expert in this. I'm just reading little things online. And um, there were some comments left on my YouTube videos from people saying that just yesterday, Bagan was approved as a, a World Heritage Site. So that's very interesting news. And there's another temple just across the road. And I think I'm gonna zip across just to uh, check it out. Why not? It's right there. The brakes on this scooter are actually, or this e-bike, are actually better than the brakes I had on the other ones. So that's uh, one improvement with this bike. Okay, this temple is the Shui Lake Tu Temple. <laughs> now that I'm being narcissistic and aiming the camera at myself, you can't see the temple that I'm uh, driving towards. Uh, dirt road, a lot of loose sand. Uh, it looks very similar to the one that I saw across the way. A lot of exposed brick, very uh, kind of rugged looking. I don't see anyone else here and so far I don't see a caretaker or a ticket checker. But I'm going to hop off the e-bike and uh, go for a walk around. Here's an interesting view of this temple. I'm just walking around the outside again. See just how rough it is. And the wall has uh, fallen apart here. You kind of get a look at the uh, brickwork on the inside. And I wonder if uh, all these stones on the inside are, are original and whether over the years... Ow, 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 ow. Ooh, a lot of thorns here. <laughs> Ouch. Just stepped on one. Wondering whether this uh, brickwork is more uh, recent, kind of covering the outside. I have no idea. There it is there. Let's continue. Ow! Oh, man. <laughs> uh, thorns. Ow, 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 ow. Got a whole bunch of them stuck in my foot here. There, I'm mobile again. <laughs> Got all the thorns out of my feet. Yeah, you don't want to be walking around here in bare feet, at least not on the outside. 
it's uh, dangerous. There's another great view of this uh, temple. Looking at my uh, GoPro and the extreme wide angle perhaps doesn't do it justice because you get so much of the surroundings in there. It looks uh, much larger than that in real life. The weather is extremely windy. Makes me a little bit nervous about my boat ride up to Mandalay. In weather like this, I don't know how rough the river will be or whether the boat can handle this kind of uh, rain, uh, wind. According to the map, I was checking maps.me. Oh, by the way, maps.me seems to be better for this area than Google Maps. There's a lot more information about the temples in Maps uh, ME than in uh, Google Maps. But anyway, from Maps uh, ME, I believe this temple is called Tilamino Temple, something like that. And according to the notes on Maps ME, this was a very good viewpoint. Like in the years ago, you could climb up all these temples. There were stairways and you could come up onto the roof and get all these beautiful viewpoints. But in the more recent years, they've all been sealed off. And the note says that there were some amazing viewpoints from this temple, but as of 2018, the uh, doors have been uh, locked and sealed, so you can't uh, go up top anymore. And I guess that uh, kind of makes sense. With a historic monument like this, you don't want, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of people every year clambering uh, all over them, you know. Over time, that would uh, wear out the sandstone and who knows, do what kind of damage. There's the temple that I'm circling right now. I would go in through here, but I think you're supposed to take your shoes off as soon as you're within the boundary of this wall. At least I saw a sign about that. And I do not want to walk through here in bare feet. There's nothing but thorns in there. So I'm gonna walk around to the front main entrance where I can take my sandals off and walk along some stone before I go in. I haven't seen any people here at all, so I don't know if there's a, a caretaker. There's a beautiful view of the temple, and you can see a standing Buddha on this side. There's my trusty steed waiting for me. Funny thing about this uh, e-bike is that it has some kind of an alarm system built into it. My keys have like a big electric button thing, you know, as if for a car alarm or something. I have no idea how it works. And every time I park this and try to remove the key or do something, the alarm goes off. <laughs> it startles me every time. I have no idea how to uh, stop it. All right, here's the entrance. And here's the sign right here that says no shoes. So I think, uh, oh, there is a, some kind of a caretaker up there. And to be honest, I'm not that pleased about that because he's going to want to walk around the inside with me and point at things and talk about what they are. And I'd, ra I'd really rather just to go inside on my own. Oh, anyway, we'll, we'll see what happens. may have found a way to avoid the uh, caretaker at the front. You can just walk around the outside and maybe go in through one of these uh, side doors. So I'm fairly sure he'll want to give me a tour and then try to sell me a painting or something afterwards. I'll just duck, uh, duck inside. 
side here. Another beautiful temple on the inside. It probably doesn't uh, come across on the uh, GoPro, but you can see some of the uh, original painting up there on the uh, ceiling. And then the little bits of uh, exposed brick. So you can see it's covered in plaster and uh, artwork. There's a lot of uh, swallow nests up there in the, in the roof as well. Time to head to the next temple up the road, and that would be Tilominio Temple. And I don't know anything about it except that this is the one that had used to have a really nice viewpoint up top, and there were instructions about where you found the door beside a certain Buddha to find the stairs to go up to the top. But uh, recent notes say that that stairway has been blocked off and you can no longer climb up to the top, which is a, a shame. So like nothing better than climbing up to the top of things. Yeah, I wonder what top speed of this uh, little blue scooter is. Looks to be about 50 kilometers an hour, as fast as we can go. I remember this temple actually. I stopped here on my very first day just as I was driving around, but I only went into the parking lot and then went somewhere else. I never uh, went inside. At that time, I didn't have my ticket yet for the archaeological zone. Wow, it's another uh, very large temple. Of course, you can't see any of that, all you can see is me. the Tilo, Tilo Minio Temple. Doing a lot of repair work up on the uh, roof line there. Just want to go for a little walk around the outer edges to see what's going on. I'm learning a few tricks of the trade when it comes to visiting these temples. I mean, wherever I go, I always like to walk around things first before I go inside. But with these temples, there's often the main entrance, and then there might be a back entrance. And uh, if you come in the back entrance, it might be a little more quiet, a little more personal. You don't have to run the gauntlet of all the people selling things at the uh, front entrance. Though, as I said the other day, it's not that bad here. 
there's hardly anyone uh, selling things. And it looks like back here is where you find a lot of the guys that are doing the repair work. Uh, check this out, they've got uh, ropes on a winch there. And the ropes go all the way up to the top. And I'm assuming they attach uh, buckets or something to the rope and then they get pulled up. Why else would they have these uh, long ropes going up there? And here's a nice quiet uh, back entrance, just as I was hoping for. Take these uh, sandals off. Another trick of the trade is uh, to not leave your footwear at the door because you might go in one exit and go out the other. And sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between the uh, different exits. They all look the same from the inside. So uh, what I do is I put my sandals inside my knapsack and then uh, carry them with me so I can exit wherever I want. And this is the back side of the uh, temple. And the whole place is uh, encircled by souvenir stalls all the way around there. And then on that side as well. Some, uh, some of the original painting up on the uh, ceiling above me. These wind chimes gives you an idea of just how windy it is today. It actually has been ever since I've uh, arrived. This temple gives me the same impression that so many of them have, like being very sort of squat and, and heavier than, uh, than I imagined them to be. I can only imagine how much damage could be done to these places by an earthquake. And they have public, they have public washrooms at the various temples and they're pretty rough and ready. They kind of look like this. A bit smelly, but serviceable, as long as you don't want to spend uh, too much time in there. Leaving the uh, temple, Tilominio. Might be able to catch a view of it behind me on the uh, camera as I exit. 
Must be a very popular temple because it has a huge parking area out front. It's almost completely empty today, but can accommodate a lot of cars. I spotted a group of five smaller temples just up the road a little bit. And I think I'm going to go uh, check those out next. Oh, I was going to go that direction, but there seem to be some structures out here as well. Since the e-bike is doing all the work, why don't we uh, head this way? Maybe it's time to uh, stop looking at myself on the camera and uh, spin it around. All right, there's the view ahead of me. It's probably more interesting than uh, looking at me. When I was thinking about the temples and all the bricks the other day, and it made me think about my time in uh, Indonesia and Bangladesh, where I saw so many kilns and brick making, I remember that all of it was right beside a river. And that makes a lot of sense, I guess, because you would find the clay and the water you need for brick making beside a river. So I guess it's no surprise that uh, all of these brick-built pagodas in Bagan are right beside the uh, Irrawaddy River. I imagine that's where all of the material for the bricks came from. Ah, there's just no end to these uh, small pagodas. They're just everywhere. Something else I read that surprised me was that pagodas were continually built here up until about 2010. And again, for the idea that in Buddhism, by building the pagoda or donating money to have one built, you gain merit for yourself in your uh, next life. And that continued to drive the uh, construction of pagodas right up until quite recently. But that's something that UNESCO also had trouble with, that they shouldn't be building new structures at all, whether they're pagodas or hotels or anything else. So, because that's part of the bargaining they've been going through. And I was thinking about that because pagodas like this one seem quite different to me. They look very new, very recently built, because this is certainly not, you know, a thousand years old or anything like that. At least I don't imagine it is. And the same goes with a couple of these up ahead too. I don't know if I'm correct, but I think the large temple ahead on the left is known as Shui Sanda Temple. And it's a well-known sunset or sunrise viewing temple. So this is where everyone goes to see the sunrise or set, I think. I'll have to get closer before I can uh, read any signs and know for sure. From a distance, it looks like there are some stairs going up it, which would be really nice because I haven't been able to go up anything. I'm uh, itching for the chance to climb up something and get a little bit of a view, even if it's just a small one. That's something that's really lacking here, I find. Even the larger temples and the really large pagodas, you can't climb up anywhere, so you, you don't get the sense of uh, the whole region, the whole area.
there's the sign. So it is Shui Shui Sanda Pagoda. And if I had to guess, I would say that those stairs are blocked off because I don't see anybody uh, climbing up them right now. But I'm gonna get off the e-bike and uh, take a closer look anyway. And there's the sign, Shui Sanda Pagoda. Let's see if my e-bike uh, alarm goes off. Hey, puppy. There it is. <laughs> Surprises me every time. I'm going to be very disappointed if I can't go up any of these stairs. Kind of makes sense that you would be able to because as I said, this is the sunset or sunrise viewing pagoda. They say that this place is jammed with people early in the morning or at night. And the only place to really see it would be, uh, you know, from up there. So you'd want to climb up there. And there's the dreaded sign. Do not climb. Don't climb. Yeah, it's even blocked off with a chicken wire up there. Hmm, it's too bad. And if that's the case, how could it possibly be a sunrise viewing spot if you can't go up to the top? Perhaps there is one stair that's open, so I'm gonna have to go all the way around. Oh, look at this poor guardian lion. He lost his head. Oh, I don't see a sign here, but it's still blocked off with uh, chicken wire. So I don't know what's going on with this uh, stairs business. So disappointing. I'm kind of happy when I see one of these large uh, bus tour groups come through because it kind of takes the pressure off me. I go to all these places, but I never buy anything. And I always feel kind of guilty about that. You know, that I haven't bought any of the arts and crafts from all these people. But then when I see one of these big bus tours and they're all crowding around the souvenir stalls and they're buying all these things to take home, then at least I feel like they're actually, they have some business. And uh, if I walk by them and just smile and say, no, thank you, then it's okay because they're going to uh, get some business from the bus tour groups. Uh, there it is my uh, tall pagoda that I want to climb, but can't climb up there. I could probably sneak up there pretty easily, but uh, being a law-abiding fellow, I won't. The next temple I want to visit, I think is called Daman Yanggi, something like that. And its claim to fame is that it is the largest of all the temples in Bagan. And I don't know for sure that it is down this road, but I think it's off in this direction somewhere. With the power of Google Maps and uh, maps.me, I should be able to uh, find my way. Ooh, my e-bike doesn't want to get through this soft stand though. One interesting thing I noticed is that at one of the other pagodas that I visited, where they had all the uh, souvenir stalls, I spotted a couple that had 
paintings that were exactly the same as the paintings that the man was showing me at the other pagoda. And he claimed to be the painter. He says, you know, I'm a painter and these are my paintings and would you like to buy one? And at the souvenir stall, the guy said the same thing. He said that he was a painter, an artist, and these were his paintings. But judging that they're all exactly the same and there's so many of them, they're obviously mass produced somewhere and they're all claiming that they're individually made by them. Still, you know, no big deal. False advertising, but they are, they are, they were really nice paintings. It would be nice to have them if uh, I had a place, had a, if I had a wall to hang them up, which I don't. After my map check, I figured out that I'm heading in the right direction, I think. Oh, and I think I just spotted Damayangi, a hulking pagoda or temple off to my left. <laughs> Not easy getting down these roads. Let's see. Ah, yes, I think there it is, right there. Stuck in the sand. There we are, it broke free. Okay, that is an impressive structure. I saw a motorbike come out of these gates and this car is going in. So, uh... Not sure if I'm allowed to go in there. Maybe I'll just park my e-bike out here. Park it in the shade. There. And there it is, Dam Dama Yang. Uh oh, oh, you're losing your postcards. The wind is taking them away. He was hoping to sell them to me, but the wind took them. Looks like it was okay to park inside here. I just wasn't sure. I never like getting yelled at for uh, doing something wrong. <laughs> so I err on the side of caution. Yeah, I can see how this one could be the largest one here. It's got a hulking look to it. Hello. In this area too? No shoes? Okay. Okay. I thought only up there. The whole area. Okay. Well, that was kind of amusing. I was so careful about not wanting to even uh, break the law or break the rules by driving my uh, e-bike in through the gates. And then I ended up getting uh, chastised for wearing my sandals. I thought it would be okay to wear your sandals out here because you know you can drive your vehicle right inside and while you're driving your vehicle you're wearing your footwear of course. <laughs> but I guess as soon as you step off your e-bike or you step out of your car you have to take your uh, shoes off. I thought you only had to do that when you're up on the platform you know around the pagoda itself but it covers this whole area. Yeah, I haven't gone inside yet. Just uh, looking at it from the outside. Man, I wish we could go like inside and up. Love to uh, get up there, but apparently can't go up here either. I'm pretty sure this is the largest entrance, the largest door that I've seen at any of the pagodas. So I'm gonna go inside and uh, take a short look around.
it's quite dark in here, so you probably can't uh, see me very well. But I think that was also the, uh, the largest Buddha that I've seen, the largest Buddha image in any of the pagodas. Extremely high. That's the highest ceiling I've ever seen. So I think this definitely wins the prize as the largest temple. There are some windows up on the second floor. Definitely rooms up there and hallways, but I didn't see any, even a hint of a stairway in there, so I have no idea how, how you get up there. So, so unfortunate, I can't uh, get up to the top of these things. When I was reading about the application for UNESCO World Heritage Site status, one of the complaints the UNESCO had was that they constructed some kind of a viewing tower. And I remember seeing a viewing tower mentioned in an article or something. And it, to me, I thought that was actually a great idea, you know, a tower that you can climb up into and uh, get a view of the area. So I thought that was actually a pretty good idea, but apparently this was a problem for uh, UNESCO. They didn't like that structure. In all my uh, driving around here, I haven't seen it anywhere, so maybe it's already been uh, torn down. And I also, you also hear a lot about balloon rides here. You go up in a balloon to see the, uh, the plane with all the stupas and the temples but I haven't seen a single uh, balloon in the sky since I've been here. A day like today, of course, there's no way they could fly. It's just way too windy. Well, you'd think uh, one day here or there, there would have been a balloon in the sky, but I haven't seen any of them. Before I call an end to this day of uh, touring the temples, I think I'm going to look at at least one more. I just uh, spotted it off in uh, the distance here. I'll turn the camera around. There you can see it there. There's actually two of them. They look quite impressive from a distance. Um, I just looked up the name, Mayak Guni. I think it's called the one in the foreground, Mayak Guni Faya. And uh, I'm gonna see if my e-bike can get me out there and uh, take a look at that one next. Okay, off to perhaps the last temple of the day. That's assuming I can get there this way. There may not be a road heading there. Oh, it looks like there is. Ah, it's not as far away as I thought it was. I got blasted in the face there by, <laughs> by a lot of dust and dirt and a couple of big beetles, I think, hit me in the face. And here is this temple.
Let's sneak inside and see what's going on. This place feels a bit more abandoned and neglected than any of the others that I've been to. The uh, hallways got these piles of uh, branches. One more temple before I go back to Nyung U, and that is uh, quite a well-known temple. One of the most popular ones here, I believe, called Sulamani, Sulamani Temple. And I think it's about half a kilometer in this direction. Uh, and I think I spotted it already. Again, it would be so nice to be able to go up at least one level, you know, halfway up just to get a view. But it doesn't look like it's possible. doing more reconstruction work up on the very top there and just as I was walking by I saw how they were using this uh, rope system to uh, get mortar up to the top this guy just standing there with the uh, the blue lungi he holds on to that wooden pole and then just walks and as he walks away you know in, in this direction he just uh, pulls up on the rope and the mortar gets lifted all the way up to there. Very simple, but reliable, I guess. This pagoda has all the different entrances, one on each uh, side, but they're all locked and closed except for the main one at the front.
Well, goodbye to the Suleiman Pagoda, Sulamani. There's a sign down there that says it was built in 1183. find it interesting, they're very serious about no smoking in any of the pagodas. You see a sign here pointing to the smoking zone, and another one pointing to the smoking zone, and then these two huge signs over there indicating a smoking zone. By the time you get there, you feel like you've been quarantined, I think. And that is it for my e-bike adventure for today. I just dropped it off. This is the uh, place where I rented it from. And this is also the place where I bought my ticket for the boat to Mandalay. And they also sell tickets for buses and uh, balloon rides and everything else you can possibly imagine they can do here, laundry service, all out of this uh, little uh, spot right here, which is kind of cool. And there's my e-bike. Worked really well, got me around today, no problem at all. So, I'm just heading back to my guest house. And, uh, yeah, I've lost track of how many pagodas and temples I went to today. I have one more day here in Bagan. I don't know whether I'll go out into the archaeological zone again. I might uh, think of something else to do tomorrow. We will see. Or. I will just do nothing at all and get rested for my uh, boat trip to uh, Mandalay on uh, Tuesday morning. Yeah, the boat leaves at 5.30 in the morning, it takes about 10 hours um, at a minimum to get to Mandalay. You board the boat at 5, which means basically you're leaving for the jetty at 4.30 in the morning, which means you're getting up at uh, 3.30 or 4. So, <laughs> I have to plan ahead and make sure I get some rest before I wake up that early. Starting to think maybe a, a bus was a better choice than the boat. <laughs> we'll find out. Anyway, end of my e-bike adventures for today, and I'll see you in the next video.